It's a beautiful, beautiful morning, a very cool and wet morning at that. It's been raining in the nation's capital, Abuja. And the weather has been really chilly. The road is cleared up. I mean, people are getting some sleep. But for us, we have to, you know, come to work uh, in order to have this amazing program for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sumaya Abubakar. And as usual, I'm not alone. I am with my own favorite girl. Whom I'm going to miss today so bad. Yes, and my scarf has decided to embarrass me this early morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sumi. Uh, yeah, that, yesterday we talked about how you know it was a rainy day, but today is an even rainier day. Indeed. It's more, you know. I've washed my clothes since two days ago, and they haven't dried, mm. so I don't even know what I'm. It going is to. August. I mean, th these few days have been sh showing that yes, it is August. You know, mm. August has been has been known for a long time that. It is for a, a rainy, you know, a rainy yeah, month, a August, rainy season. August rain. Yeah. yeah, hence the term August rain. Well, today, like Sumi has said, promises to be a fantastic and phenomenal day. I'm Dasha and Hussein Ausman. Thank you so much for joining us. And today is uh, the last Saturday. <laughs> it's not the last, last Saturday. Last Saturday, yeah. This, you know, I, I'm, I, there is one thing that I know, you know, um, is that... I'm going to miss you. My girl what is... What are you talking about? <laughs> my, we my... still have Friday for that, don't we? Okay, because it's Saturday. Okay. All right, so yes, let's, yes. let's tell the today audience it's, Today Saturday. is like uh, the last Saturday that we'll be hosting the show with Husseina because um, she's moving on. You know, it's live. So... Uh, uh, a lot of people have come and gone and yeah, we're here like, and now it's time for us to go indeed yeah, indeed so. all right but it's been uh, an awesome you know ride mm. all the same it's been fantastic and i've enjoyed myself i've enjoyed working with sumaya <laughs> and the numerous people that actually came before you ibrahim yes, yes. and the rest so yes we just we wish say? you the best in your yes. you know future endeavors thank there. you <laughs> All right, so uh, like I said, we have an interesting lineup for you this morning. So make sure you stick around because uh, we'll be bringing you uh, an Ariwa musician who will be joining us later to talk about hip hop in the northern part of Nigeria. And also we'll be bringing you some entertainment gossip that is, if time permits. But before anything, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll take a look at what the national dailies are saying this morning. Stay with us.
and thank you for staying with us right now it's time for the newspaper review and we'll begin by taking the front line page of daily trust newspaper daily trust saturday this morning now we have the lead story here that says uh, talks about ministers and how power play gang up forced el rufai out we also have writers that says ex kaduna governor jets out after meeting tinubu Ashiwaju is greatest loser, says Professor Kari. President's body language not reassuring and presidency, mum. We also have a Niger crisis. Nigeria, Bene, Ivory Coast, Senegal commit troops as AU backs echoers. Writers here says Russia warns against military action. Nigerians to picket French military base. Emir Bayero calls for caution as imam lead prayers against military intervention you can find details of that story on pages five and six on encounter i wanted to make history says female biker who toured the north now it's a good thing that she's back safe mm. now our concerns over ex-governor's appointments by successive presidents and uh more news our economy must recover for good says tinubu residents doctors suspend nationwide strike Six die, ten injured as Zaria Central Mosque collapses on worshippers. Sad one there. Audition, aud audited account. CBN's profits surged to 103.8 billion naira in 2022. And now at the top of the page, we have uh, on entertainment. New faces, fresh talents, meet some Kanye Woods emerging stars. Uh, in, on, uh, there's an interview here on... Uh, with Bazoom's party Shiftain, talks about how Niger crewists on popular hire illiterates to attack politicians. And these are some of the stories on Daily Trust Saturday. All right, let's move to the punch this Saturday. From the top of the newspaper there, it says, How Tinubu Erufai ministerial deal crumbled. Why, dear says, voided ex-Kaduna governor's initial clearance. 
Now this you find on page four of the newspaper. Beside it, we see family trade, household where husband, wife, son are vulcanizers. Interesting one there you'll find on page 22. I mean, in this Nigeria, you do need a handwork there. A major story that says the Nigerians in Niger beg for uh, the federal government for evacuation over impending attack. A writer there says hosts already displaying hostility, fear, xenophobic attacks. That's a scary one there. Nema need come plan repatriation if required. Echo as defense chiefs meet in Accra today. You find all this story on page four of the newspaper. There's the Northern women face divorce trauma for receiving treatment from male doctors. I actually saw a, a story on that one. You find this on page 21 and 22. Why I am surrounded by bodyguards. That's Rivers Varsity SUG president uh, said. Uh, you'll find this on page two of the newspaper. On the entertainment segment, I shouldn't have been evicted from BBN. That's according to Princess for BBN lovers there and the watchers there. Uh, at the bottom there, it says, Why I stopped Shaibu from entering my house, according to Obaseki. And these are some of the stories on the Punch newspaper this morning. All right, we also have on the Nation newspaper from the top there, Oshomale to Shaibu. APC not haven for failed politicians. And uh, we also have, uh, I think this particular uh, paper is for yesterday. But we'll move on to the next paper, which is the Sun, Saturday Sun newspaper. And we also have a story here that says, that's the lead story, Niger war drums echo us under attack. We have uh, writers that say strong opposition against regional bodies order to deploy standby force. Don't plunge region into senseless war, Catholic bishops Onekan says. Uh, military action will create more insecurity in Africa, says Ajike. War on Nigeria is war on northern Nigeria, Yusuf Cleric. Yusuf says cleric northern groups. You can find details of that story on pages 21, 22, 24 and 26. We also have uh, below that story there, uh, police kill three gunmen, several escape with bullet wounds in Enugu. Gunmen kill two soldiers, kidnap construction worker in Rivers. Controversy over optometrist's sudden death. Uh, Benway, death toll rises to eight as gunmen kill father of seven others. Regionalism, best option to salvage Nigeria's future, says Ghani Adams. Oshun Oshogbo, three feared dead, several injured. On the footnote there, my priority is swift economic recovery for greater good, says Tinubu. Now, uh, just beside the name mast, there we have CBN releases seven-year financial statements, owes JP Morgan 3.2 trillion naira, Remittances giving Nigeria more revenue than oil, says CBN boss. How Islamic cleric hypnotized me, stole my wife, kids for 12 years, says American returnee. And I think we're hearing from the other side uh, because at first it was uh, the story of the uh, imam who, uh, sorry, al Alfa, mm -hmm. Alfa who stole uh, a US-based man's wife and children and also money, millions of naira. And now we're hearing from the horse's mouth. That's the man, uh, mm -hmm. the man in, in question. Now, uh, he said, Alfa connived with Babalao to fleece me of 105 million naira and luxury cars. Uh, moving on to insecurity, coffin business booms in southeast. Asi to alleges mass exodus in region, says businesses dying. IYM founder says federal government not sincere. That's on insecurity. Uh, talking about, you know, businesses dying. Okay. All right. Now compare Lasso to provide my son's intestines. Mother begs Sangwolu. And these are some of the stories on Saturday Sun. All right. Let's move to this day newspaper this morning. Below the master says, Obaseki, my deputy plotted coup against me. He's so desperate. Says Shaibu frantic to succeed him at all costs. The major story there says AU, UN, EU raised the alarm about Bazoom's detention conditions and safety. 
right? That's there says, say the post president exposed to inhuman degrading treatment in violation of international human rights law. And coup leaders brand, uh, brandishing threats to of killing Bazoom in the event of military intervention. The coup supporters protest near French military base. Echo as cautions Russia against involvement of the Wagner Group. Now, all the stories that you'd find uh, on the uh, Disney newspaper there. Below that pictorial there, it says, Court stops FBN holdings from holding AGM. You'll find this on page 10 of the newspaper. At the top of the newspaper there, with $17 billion net reserves, CBN's audited account shows $13.8 billion exposure to J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, FX forwards and introduces framework for in-country FX transfers to remove barriers. Now, all the stories you'd find on page five of the newspaper. So these are some of the stories on this day this morning. All right, uh, moving on to the leadership weekend. And uh, from the top there, we have Mina Airport to start commercial flights soon, which is a big one there. And this is attributed to Governor Bogo. And uh, we have, um, I yearn to impact society more, says Ademi. We also have uh, how, that's the lead story there. How high wire politics cuttled al Fai's cabinet confirmation. Ex-governors plans to add gas to power ministry's portfolio now in limbo. Badabi Amila Ribadu can't act without Tinubu's approval, says presidential aide. We also have uh, gendarmes manning Niger border posts on a red alert. Gendarmes manning Niger border posts on red alert. Um, patrol crossings day and night. Tinubu Echo has yet to give explicit order for invasion. And uh, we also have uh, more on the footnotes there. Amidst presidential probe, CBN releases results after eight years. 89 hostages rescued as troops kill 38 terrorists, arrest 205. We also have still on insecurity. Troops snap IPOP commander, gun runners and cross river, raid camps in Enugu. And these are some of the stories on Leadership Weekend. All right, let's move to the Blueprint Weekend this morning. Uh, from the top there, it says, First Lady Uluremi welcomes rescued Chibok girl Rebecca. Says Rebecca will be our first comeback story and returnee. Well, amen to that. You find this on page four of the newspaper there. <clears throat> Below the mask there, it says, Oba Otutsleko Ifain Olezo, where are they now? Okay. Uh, below that, you'd see troops neutralize 38 terrorists and arrest 175 gunmen. You find this on page nine of the newspaper there. CBN publishes consolidated financial statements post 103.85 billion naira profit. Uh, the major story says subsidy removal palliatives. Nigerians want leaders, the rich to make sacrifices. And the writers there says suggest effective ways for distribution of palliatives. Urge government to update and bundle the social register. Express fears politicians may hoard palliatives like COVID-19 time. Now, all this story you'll find on page 5 and 6 of the newspaper. Below that, you'd see, despite downpours, Tinubu attends Senator Sani Musa's daughter's wedding fatiha. You'll find this on page 4 of the newspaper. Beside it, you'd see President Tinubu's 18% female ministers versus campaign promise. You'll find this on page 22, Swift Economic Recovery for Greatest Number of Citizens, My Priority. That's according to President Tunubu. You'll find this also on page 4 of the newspaper. Tragedy as four parish in Zaria Central marks collapse. Sad one there. Also, this story is on page 4. And Niger coup, uh, Republic coup, all eyes on ECOWAS. This you find on page 15. Now, this is some of the stories on the blueprint weekend all right uh, let's take a look at vanguard newspaper now we have uh, the lead story here that talks about okay uh niger coup nigerians 
reject ECOWAS war plan. Okay, ECOWAS war plan back NAS. We also have writers that say, tell President Tinubu to tackle the petrol crisis and other woes. Say ECOWAS lacks the authority to invade a sovereign nation. Will going to war be in our national interest? Lawyers, activists, others speak. Now, we also have below that, uh, El Rufai E withdraws interest of ministerial, in ministerial appointment, jets out of the country. IMT chief lecturers back Vanguard condemn corruption in school. Carpets the PRO's reaction to report. Now, we also have a pictorial there of Angela Okori, Anita Joseph, and this uh, definitely is an entertainment, whatever it is that they said. I'm sure it's, uh, it will be found in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And at the top there, we have compel hospital authorities to produce my son's intestines. Mother begs Sangwo Lu. Now, how 30-year-old woman uses organisms for chronic pain relief, says twice daily. Okay, moving on. Genesis of a uh, problem between me and my deputy, says Governor Baseki as he opens up. And these are some of the stories on Saturday, Vanguard. All right, let's move to the Guardian newspaper this morning. The lead story there says, Concerns as small Nigerians fall prey to fake bank alerts. you find this on page two. Now, now one thing that, uh, you know, we can, you know, uh, we can talk about, you know, we can't deny is the fact that m most people that fall for all this kind of scam are people that always want quick money, so... <laughs> that kind of thing. And beside there, you'd see African Union backs ECOWAS responds to Niger coup as Northern Coalition kicks. And nothing will be spared to stimulate a revamp economy. That's according to Tinubu. Nursing graduates killed, womb removed after night outing in Ibadan. A sad, very sad story there. Uh, below there, you'd see how AMVCA created 27,000 jobs and revolutionized Africans' film sector. You find this on page 29 of the newspaper. Resident doctors suspend nationwide strike. You find this on page 30. Now, uh, below the mask there in the entertainment segment, it says, why artworks in public spaces should be preserved? Uh, beside that, you see a fees or yet rule. There are so many uh, gate crashes in movie industry, okay? I mean, we would want to hear from the OGs of uh, the movie industries on that one. And Chinedu Otako Azi, success is less about gender and more about competence and reliability. Okay, well, she said what she said. Now, these are some of the stories on the Guardian newspaper this morning. All right, let's check out what the Saturday Telegraph is saying. Niger Ku, AU expresses support for ECOWAS decision as ultimatum ends uh, today. Now we also have uh, Patriots, Elders Forum urges Echoers to pursue dialogue option. We also have Akinola Aguda's son. My father resigned as judge when Obasanjo tried to interfere in his work. Says, dad was disappointed. Abuja became more like capital of North. Now we also have more stories. The lead story talks about uh, organ harvesting or negligence. Boys, this is they made this the lead story by the way. Boys' intestine vanishes after surgeries at Lassuth Private Hospital. Now, doctors cannot explain how uh, the mom's 12 year old son's organ got missing. The boy was mutilated, intestine removed at private hospital, says Lassuth CMD. Organ intact when we referred patient to Lassuth, says Obitox MD. So it's a uh, it's a it's a case between who so which of hospitals. the hospitals actually is responsible you know they're trading blames already uh, well, well how, the, how the question is which of the organs i mean intestine, the intestines, the intestines. he would die though i i, I don't know can someone doctors survive actually, long without the intestine have, have a way of keeping patients on life support so i don't know if he's on life support right now i don't have an idea Okay, this is going to be an interesting oh, case if because dead. the mom is traumatized. Yeah. I can't even imagine. All right, so uh, we'll stimulate economy to work for majority, for greatest majority, says Tinubu. Edo crisis, Shaibu's action, coup against me, says Obaseki. And we also have on the ministerial nominees, Tinubu breached constitution, 
says lawyers and Southeast senators. Ohaneze wants more slots, says it's unjust to give Southeast only five. Resident doctors suspend strike, resume work today. And these are some of the stories on Saturday Telegraph. Okay, and with that, we wrap up, you know, uh, this uh, taking the headlines from the newspapers. And we'll just perhaps uh, dissect a few or two. Ujena, let, let's talk about this, uh, uh, how power play gang up forced RFI out. Do, do you think it's a gang up though? I wouldn't actually know because um, there, there were lots of petitions filed against him. You know, in, in the beginning, he actually said he was already minister of the FCT, so he wouldn't want to be, you know, a minister. And then, you know, he was quoted in interviews saying that uh, President Tinubu had been calling him to work for him and everything. And then all of a sudden, we hear that he was, his name was actually on the list. He went for the first, first screening. screening and everything. And I don't know, some senators were against him. Some lawmakers were against him. You know, there are petitions here and there, even mm. from Kaduna by organizations, you know, uh, warning and, you know, pleading and for him not charges. to be... Yes, a lot of allegations. Yes, a lot of allegations. lots of allegations and all that. We don't know. We really, I really cannot say what happened or if he actually withdrew himself because there are also speculations that he withdrew mm. because probably because of the drama and all that. But, you know, I'm sure in time it will come out. Mm. It will mm -hmm. come out. Whatever happened would come out. Indeed. I mean, uh, that uh, ex Kaduna governor uh, jets out after meeting Tinubu and Asiwaju, um, greatest uh, loser, that's according to Professor Ka Karina. Some people are saying that Erifai would have been a great addition to, uh, you know, the ministers. It would ha he, someone I, I, can, I can remember uh, in a comment section, someone was saying that Inetizen pointed out that he is a brain box. So uh, he could have been a great addition since uh, President Bola Metsunubu is about creating cabinets of people that can bring something, you know, good to the society. Well, I'm but sure if it doesn't work out, uh, there would be someone, you know, uh, as smart or if not even smarter. Yeah, there is a speculation that he actually gave another name. You know, exactly. From, so, from, you know, uh, Kaduna State. So we're hoping for the best. I mean, you know, when it comes to jobs, um, it's safe to say that um, jobs would definitely go on without you. Yes, it would definitely, whether you're the smartest person on earth, Indeed. jobs will go on without you, so. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, move on, a bigger story. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned this story about uh, this boy with the intestine thing, and, and mm -hmm. honestly, that, that is a heartbreaking. Okay, now I actually uh, have a story about it here, and I'm just going to read up a few of what I'm seeing here. Okay. Uh, she actually narrated that sometime in February this year, the, her boy started vomiting and stooling, and the hospital, they took him to suspected typhoid. Now, he was treated, but when his condition didn't improve, after five days, you know, they moved to another hospital, that's the LB Tox Medical Center, uh, where it was discovered that he had ruptured appendix, which mm. would require surgery. And you know, once your appendix ruptures, it only takes the grace of God for Indeed. you to survive. And that it. is if it's even if it was, you know, um, if the doctors figure it out uh, earlier on time. Mm. Yes. Now he went. He was out of the hospital after about two weeks. He was looking very, very healthy, and he had even resumed school, doing well until June. That was since February, until June, when he complained of pain in his stomach. He went back to the hospital where it was discovered that he had intestinal obstruction and he underwent another surgery. Now, there appeared a complication as the boy was still draining bilos fluid more than seven days after the surgery. That's at Obi that's uh, according to the CMD at Obitox. Mm. And, uh, you know, he said the boy would require another surgery. And according to him, he had already secured the services of a professor from a teaching hospital to be part of the operation. But the mom said they declined and urged him to be transferred to Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, mm. where it's believed, you know, to be, they, they actually have more, mm. more robust care for children and everything. Now, they conducted a series of tests and uh, while they were draining the fluid, you know, and all that, they asked them to buy different kinds of drugs and they were all about that. And the consultant handling her son's case told her after surgery, that when they opened up the boy, that's in last week now, when they opened up the boy, they found no small intestines, only large intestines, and they could not guarantee that he would survive another five days. Wow. 
So now, oh, wow. the, the last suit is blaming Obitox. Obitox uh, Medical Center is blaming last suit. So probably in the course of the surgery, you know, a instead lot of just of removing, surgery. you know, the appendix, mm. they ended up, you know, removing, removing other things without letting the parents know. Exactly. No, they didn't even know. Probably they didn't know. I don't know because there are lots. Did of, you know then? There are lots of there are lots of medical uh, practitioners there and medical. Uh, uh, medical Experts. hospitals there mm. who don't even know what they're doing. That's the question because what are you doing opening up a human being? I mean, even animals, you wouldn't take the risk if you don't know the difference between, between the appendix, which is just a very intestines. small, the last portion of the very, very tiny exactly. portion. And if there, if there were any complications that need arise, you, you know, for something to be removed, mom. immediately after yes, the surgery, you exactly. tell the you family and exactly, the, the guardian you know, uh, at risk. So, what happens? So, if he dies, they'll be like, okay, ah. You know, some people don't even think. Some people don't really have the fear of mm. God. Do you understand? Now, a lot of questions is uh, uh, questions are being raised, mm. and some are saying, "Is it a case of uh, organ harvesting? harvesting?" But do they really harvest small intestines? <laughs> you wouldn't know. You, you wouldn't know. know. Most times, you, because it's, it's difficult to actually sew it back. So most times, once you remove the intestine, what they do is they just drag it and put it back or something. You know, because it's difficult to actually sew it back. Mm. So I, I seriously don't know what is happening. sensitive topic. I mean, yes. that boy must have gone through a lot. And the mother, oh my God. The and the mother said, you know, the implication of development was that the boy could no longer absorb nutrients from the food he consumes and may rely on total parental, sorry, parenteral nutrition, which could be given intravenously for the rest of his life. Oh, it's really, really oh sad. Oh God, okay. It's really, really that, that, sad. That's really scary. I honestly... I, I, I know we shouldn't even let emotions get worse, but I'm getting yeah. emotional on that matter. And I can't imagine what the, the parents are going through on that one. A very, very sad one there. But yeah, these are some of the stories that we could touch up on this morning. Now, let's take a short break. And when we come back, it will be time to open up our phone line to hear from you. So stay with us. But the situation where you find that they look like the Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.
All right, welcome back and thank you for staying. You're still watching Daybreak Extra on Trust TV. Now, uh, today our topic will open, it's, an, it's time for the open line discussion. Open line where you get to call in and, uh, you know, get to have your say on what we will be discussing this morning. And, you know, it's always a time that we actually look forward to. Indeed. Yeah, we always look forward to hearing, you know, uh, what the other end actually has to say about a specific topic. And today we'll be discussing the effects of retirement on retirees and their families uh, or the impact of retirement on retirees and their families. And this is something that I know a lot of people actually go through. If once uh, you've approached retirement age, you know, you've been saving money for like 60 years. Once you approach retirement age and you, it's now time for you to access the money, it's a different ball game Indeed. entirely, right? That's if you've been saving in some uh, coffers where instead they use your money for something else. <laughs> you find difficult to access and, it, you know, you, there are lots of, I think the poorest set of people in Nigeria are the retirees. Imagine working that long, um, mm -hmm saving so much money so that you can enjoy your retirement without even depending on anybody, not even your children, and then you go for your money, your hard-earned money, and it doesn't and come to you. There's a lot of stress, uh, you know, on that one. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of sad stories around. Yeah, lots of, on, lots, on, of lots of and, lots of stories. And, you know, we've actually seen uh, in, the, in, in recent times a lot of retirees picketing offices, you know, uh, government offices, uh, uh, picketing federal parastatals, asking and demanding for their monies, you mm. know, and everything. And some of them are aged people. Some of them are in their 80s. Mm. Most of them in their 70s. They don't even have the strength, the strength. you know. It's, it's really sad when, you know, such stuff actually happens. But let's get to see what this is all about. Many of us spend years picturing our ideal retirement, whether it's traveling the world, spending more, with, more time with family and friends, Pursuing hobbies such as painting, golf, gardening, fishing, or simply enjoying the freedom to relax and take it easy for a change. In the public sector, the failure of government to meet the pension expectations of retirees has shattered the plans of many, as well as inducing economic trauma, which is, in some cases, have led to fatalities. And we have stories, you know, of uh, so many senior citizens who had collapsed and died on queues while waiting for their pensions. The stress to even get your pension is something. Yes. You waiting for your pension is something. And the pension is actually uh, compulsory, especially if you're a permanent staff. Yes. It is you, compulsory. You don't have, no, nobody has actually consult uh, you, you know, consult to know you to if know whether you're if you want. Exactly. Not, so. It's compulsory. Mm. And it's taken once your salary, uh, you know, uh, before comes Before your in, salary, before your salary your you know, it's, it's removed and everything. Now, some of the families of these deceased are frustrated and cannot even access their father's or mother's pension due to unnecessary demands made by the pension bodies. But while we tend to give lots of thought to planning for the financial aspects of retirement, we often overlook the psychological impacts of retiring from work, which is very true. Having spent so many years working and then you stop Going it definitely out. affects you somehow. Yeah. But in some cases, I don't think this Gen Z and millennials <laughs> will be affected by not working. Do you think so? Probably Gen Zs will not be. Maybe millennials, <laughs> yeah, but not Gen Zs. It's because, you know, people are more... Uh, now there is Relax, digital work. More laid yes, back. So you can do more things. Now, uh, you may grieve the loss of your old life, feel stressed about how you're going to fill your days, or even worry about the toll that... Uh, being at home all day is taken on your relationship with your spouse or partner. And now some new retirees even experience mental health issues such as depression and anxiety. Now, uh, the fact that retirement happens at old age, health is also an important consideration. We all know mm -hmm. that. Uh, how can we change the narrative of some, some of these issues that retirees are actually facing, like lack of accountability and transparency in management of the contributed funds or even fraud in other cases and irregularities also lack of annual auditing and publication of annual audit reports of trustees illegal dissolution of the trustees and many more now um if you want to join us on this conversation you can actually uh you would actually find uh, the number on the screen yes the number is definitely on the screen just uh, either call us on that number or send us a message on whatsapp 
Yeah, what's the okay. message? The number is there, 080 That is the number on your screen. Feel free to send us a message or even call us. You know, if you've tried sending messages and it doesn't go, if you've, if you've tried calling us and doesn't, it didn't go through, or if it doesn't go through, please make sure you send us a WhatsApp message and we'll definitely read it. And please make sure when you're calling us, you move away from your TV set. You either turn it off or... Uh, turn the volume down so we could uh, talk to you on phone. Okay, and we already have a caller. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on Daybreak Extra. What's your name and location? Hello. 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 Good yes. morning. What's your name and location? My name is Usman Garba Santaki, calling for Anyola. All right, Usman, it's nice to hear your voice. Thank you for calling us. So, I was very sad in the opening remarks. I heard that you are living. Are you living daily trust or your change department? Who said that? Honestly, I'm your one, one of your fans. So I was so devastated much. by hearing that you are you are living. Are you living trust TV or your, your change department? Yeah, I'm living. So that we, we, need, we need to know why you are going. So that we we'll put you in prayer. <laughs> yeah, our prayer will be in prayers. Just what is it? Prayers. <laughs> So I wish you the best in whatever endeavor you find yourself doing. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Usman. I appreciate uh, it. In regards, in regards of the topic of today, honestly speaking, a lot of pensioners are having it very bad, more especially those on the pension scheme. The, but the people that they are, they are on defined pension scheme are the more are the ones that they are, they are getting things better. You will find somebody work for 35 years, at the end of the day, even the pension is not forthcoming. And this is money, not what is no, 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 anybody's money. It is your own money that you, you set. Most of these pension schemes, uh, companies that the federal government has introduced, or some states has also introduced, are not healthy matters, honestly speaking. Somebody will retire, but the, the, if you see the amount of money that's been paid to him or as a pension on monthly basis, it's nothing to write about. So I'm an advocate of let the government change this thing completely and turn back to the defined pension scheme. That defined pension scheme is more appropriate and the government should make sure that they set up a pension commission board to each state so that at the end of the day, when you retire after that 12 years of service or a payment of 50 years of service, your money is there intact so that you, you find something to face the challenges of another life, lifestyle. I'm that being a civil servant for that value. That is what I'm advocating for. Let government resort back to defined pension scheme. It is a perfect one. Thank you very much. I'm a God bless. And I wish you the best in whatever place you find yourself. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Usman. We appreciate your call. Yola. So he actually oh. made very relevant, you know, um, suggestions. You Indeed. Know. Uh, and it's something like I think uh, was it last week? I actually saw a story of uh, a planned pension pensioners actually planning uh, a protest, but they actually shelved it. They gave an ultimatum. Yes, they gave an ultimatum to a state government. Is it federal government? I'm not really sure, you, but you I would know, actually find that story. I feel story. like these people, yeah, they don't have strong people behind them. You yeah, know, to back yeah, them that's up. another thing. And especially, some of them don't even have kids to stand up for them. So, okay, we have another caller there. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and location, please. We can't, we can't hear you. All right, you need to call us back if you want to connect with us this morning uh, to talk about, you know, the struggles of the retirees and their families. And speaking of families, um, um, Hussein, some of these people, you know, in, uh, just like you mentioned earlier, is their parents are deceased. You know that that so they have to go claim as a next of yeah, kin. Yeah, that's to, even that's even more difficult. For and them. I know people firsthand who actually lost, shed a lot of weight because of the struggles of going back and forth all around the nation's capital in order to get the money from you know their late father. Good morning. We have another caller there. Good morning. Please stay away from your TV set. We can actually hear your TV's uh, uh, volume right here. Okay, Pardon? I think you, you need to call us back or reduce the volume of your TV set in order to talk with us. All right, let's move on uh, from that. Yeah, call we're us actually back talking about, I think it was in uh, Benway State. Yes, it was in Benway State. They gave 
they give they give back hello can you hear us very well all right good morning your name and location please good morning my name is abu Bakr sabik mohammed i'm okay. calling from niger state okay go ahead with your thoughts abu Bakr. thank you so much talking about struggle of uh, retirees and their families i I think I should be one of those to comment. I'm in my fourth year after retirement. Wow. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the, this idea of contributory pension is not working in my state. That is Niger State. But mm. uh, with the the new government we have in place, with its good intention, we believe that something positive will happen. But I must tell you that the condition of retirees in Niger State is highly pathetic. There are people who have spent close to 13 years after retirement. Some are even dead. Some are paralyzed. Some are bedridden. And believe me, they have not gotten a dime of their entitlement. We have always called on the government, particularly the past government, unfortunately, they did little or nothing as far as the life of pensioners in Niger State is concerned. But our prayers is that with the coming of the new government and with the level of the preparedness we have seen, we are waiting for him to address this, the issue of these pensioners that has preoccupied almost all of us. And like I told you, a lot, a lot, a great number are in a very pathetic situation. Mm. And I must tell you, even the implementation of the so-called new contributory pension in major state is so terrible that, let me give you an instance of somebody who retired on level 16, step nine, and is being given 27,000 Naira as take home monthly pension. You can imagine, you can imagine the kind of uh, calculation these people did. So we are calling on the government to please take a look at these people and do something urgently about our life. Some of us who want to enjoy our fruit, we have worked and labored for the state. We wouldn't want to we wouldn't want our money to be handed over to somebody after we are dead. Let us have part of it so that we can also take care of our problem. Pay our debt, be able to have a roof over our head. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you so much, Abu Bakr, for that. And we're sorry about your ordeal. We hope that, of course, you know, the uh, new governor of Niger State would work on that. And other states as well, because yeah, other we, states. we have a lot of stories. Yeah. You know, a very we actually have, um, you know, uh, the governor of uh, Oshun State, uh, Adelike, you know, presenting a one point, oh, sorry, 2.1 billion naira bond to Oshun pensioners so that they can actually get paid. Uh, we also have uh, that of... Um, Oye Banji, that's uh, in Ekiti State. He mm. actually unfolded, uh, due to subsidy removal, unfolded plans for, for palliatives for pensioners as opposed to, you know, the their, normal, salary. Yeah, the normal uh, pensions that they'll be receiving monthly. Sad one. Okay, we have another caller there. Good morning. Hello? Yes, good morning. Your name and location, please. Go Hello? ahead. Okay. All right. Now, when he talks about, you know, uh, some people uh, being paid 27,000 naira monthly, you know, you actually, you actually have uh, pensioners demanding for 150,000 naira minimum pension. Oh, yes, you know, monthly. I feel when someone actually makes that demand, that means the person is, uh, knows that maybe he has a huge amount to stock mm. up, you know, with mm. his pension. Exactly. Bonds. So why are they giving him peanuts? Because it's his money. So shouldn't they be responsible for the amounts that they would want to be collecting at the end of every month? Exactly. And we're trying to change the narrative of, you know, people just going back home and waiting to, ben to make their children their own pension, uh, uh, should I say, platform or something. Okay, we have another caller there. Good morning. Good morning. Are you with us? Hello. Yes, good morning. Your name and location, please. Yeah, my name is Jacob. Jacob, can you speak louder a bit? 
Hello, my name is Jacob Terizava. I'm calling from Bauchi. Okay, Jacob from Bauchi. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I want to say that the issue of this pension contribution, based on how technology has gone far, there are more ways in which we can make this thing to be flexible for pensioners. We have a lot of apps that, at the starting years, we expect that you can be able to withdraw your money. But these, all these things are not done based on the scam that are involving pension reform. So I, um, I just wish that they should add more electronic means to ensure that pensioners can be able to access their phone at certain years. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much uh, on that one. But if they should have access, if you know a pensioner, it could be it become like a bank account for you to have access to your money. Wouldn't that defeat the purpose of someone helping you to monitor the, the amount? It depends. You know, some people would actually prefer uh, their monies being monitored so they don't end up squandering everything at once while some probably have something they really want Planned. to do with yes exactly with the so money for example they want to buy a house they want to buy a car so they should be given access to whatever they want to mm. do it's their money it took them time to save should it take them time to actually you know get the money back uh, and we well? know some people you know are just about talking about depression and all that so some people would rather go home and create a business that could just, you know, they exactly could see it and that monitor too. So, so if you have a pensioner like that who wants to start a business and has saved up like 5 million naira in their account, shouldn't they have access to that instead of 20,000 20, naira every month? Which oh, wouldn't that amount to, to nothing. Exactly. exactly. Do you understand? And then it's there's a likelihood of, you know, the person even dying before they exhaust the money and Indeed. then it behooves on the children, which might be stressful for them to Extra collect. Extra stressful. Okay, we have another caller there. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, your name and location, this please. Is, uh, this is Ahmed calling from Kasi. Okay, Ahmed. Yes. Go ahead. I think uh, uh, this is an interesting issue you guys are, are discussing. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. So, um, I think uh, the, the the problem the problem the problem of that uh, pension scheme. Uh, there is, there is, there is, there is, there is a uh, a kind of insincerity and uh, inhuman and 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 inhuman self towards addressing the issue. Because I don't know how to how to describe him. There is no how somebody can serve the government after serving the government for the whole of his life. And then he now find it very difficult to assess his pension. And this is the, 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 the most sensitive period in a civil service and in the civil servant life. Because at that point on time, he has attained an old age. <clears throat> so it mustn't be necessary that that person must have a children that they might look after him. So you can't imagine uh, the, the, the kind of situation a civil servant will find himself. One, that is why you have uh, statistically, I was able to lay my hand on the research that some uh, patriotic Nigerian makes. Because statistically, what is saying that about 45% to 50% of the patients here yeah, died before their time. The reason, the reason is simple. Many of them at that age, they are vulnerable to some certain diseases. Uh, ranging from uh, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, and all these kind of sicknesses. Some they have even paralyzed. And you know what it takes to get drugs for such kind of people. So if you don't have if you don't have uh, a children or a child to look after you, that will become a serious problem. So I think uh, this thing uh, is inhuman. I, I don't know how to even describe it because it is it is it is it is quite alarming and disturbing the way these people roaming about on the street. 
looking for their attention after their services. I think the authority needs to do something about it. And this thing only happens within the rack and files. Those people in the authorities, before they are retiring, their package is being arranged. Uh, this, is, this is so unfair. This is so unfair. I don't know how to describe it. Mm. Thank you, Amen. Are we, if we are talking about the population, uh, let's take a look at the China. How much is our population? How much is our population? That we cannot manage and give these people the life they deserve after serving our dear country. These are the faithful people. Uh, in fact, the authority need to do something about it. I did this very touching. It's very touching and very Indeed. unfortunate. Indeed, it, it, it is. I, I mean, Hussein, we're talking about this money that uh, is being packed up. We all know that it's not a money that is just kept waiting for you. It's something that they put into business in order to multiply. Exactly, so they get interest. They get you know, interest so to why, it. So the interest should serve the, the people exactly. that work there while you give the people their own do you, do money. You, do you remember when the past administration wanted to borrow pensions? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a dramatic... Like, it there was, was no explanation then. to what led them what? to that point, <laughs> you know, in, in order to, for them to even seek uh, funds to do what exactly. Uh, it's not like you're servicing the, needed, the they, pension they needed, years uh, or something. They needed to borrow some more money. They borrowed a lot, so they were just, it was just thoughts, you know, See, taken from, from the pension. From, from what Ahmed, uh, the last caller, said, yeah, I, I know someone who went through that. You know, um, her uncle was old, you know, super sick. And he was bedridden. And I think every 10 years, I'm not sure of the years, pension would make sure that you come in and then sign to make sure you're still alive in order to continue. So they had to drag him all the way from Plateau to Abuja in order to do that while really bedridden. So really that sad. is something that, you know, they could form another way in order for someone to easily to. do it without coming down there. All right, we have another caller. Good morning. Morning. He puts us on hold. <laughs> okay, I think you'd have to uh, call us uh, back at uh, that one. Okay, good morning. Are you with us? I think we, you have to call us uh, back uh, again, you know, in order to get in your thoughts, your contribution. What should the federal government do uh, when it comes to, you know, the pension, uh, the pensioners? And their sad situations, uh, you know, in challenging and getting the, their money, you know, after saving it for years. All right, we have another caller. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, your name and location, please. My name is Brian Adam. From Niger, please. Okay. Welcome to Daybreak Extra. So go ahead with your thoughts. Okay. Uh, there are two ways for so three. Number one, civil servants are not fond of doing any work before retirement. That's number one. Number two, the pension house, that is the pension managers, are too corrupt. Then number three, there is no structure on ground to take care of pensioners. And how could you imagine somebody after 60 years that cannot do anything Except civil service. We expect him after 60 years to start thinking of doing another thing. Civil servants should be encouraged to start business or to start something aside civil service. Because many people are dying, many families are in trouble after retirement. Some people will even die in pursuit of their retirement benefits through the children, they will find it very difficult. Many questions were asked to those children that they don't have answer. Maybe many letters, they ask me, or you have had the appointment letter, you are this and that, that these children cannot even assess it. So at the end of the day, you find that children and family are in trouble. So I may suggest here that at least civil servants should be given chance to start one or two things, to sustain them after uh, retirement, then please, the retirement.
time and benefit to the government to try and peace in time. Lastly, please, EFCC or ICPC should go to pension house, pension managers, and check them because most of our pension boards if you go there, you see them in luxury cars. They use some of the pensioners' money that they cannot recover for themselves. And even the pension managers, you see them in luxury. Their children are there. If you talk of the color screening, you see them in cars. But they are using your, your money, and at the end of the day, you get the token. Hmm. So I hope government look into this and take care of pensioners if not we are encouraging corruption our younger ones now are there they are watching so if you didn't get paid at the end of your work then they start thinking then and you do what otherwise which is wrong that is corruption so if somebody will be getting paid well definitely he will do his work and do it to jesus but when you think after retirement, nothing for you, then you try to go into what doesn't belong to you. I hope government will take care of this. Thank you so much. And thanks for what Thank you, you are doing. May Allah sustain you and protect you. Amen. And Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much for, you for that for wonderful, you know, contribution there. You know, he mentioned, he brought up a lot of points about civil servant being constrained, like you only have one job. And if you're serving the government, you don't do anything yes. else. So you don't have any Access other to, source of income. Yes. And even the money, because we've, they've been fighting about minimum wage for the longest time and with all the fuel subsidy removal and all that. So people don't even have enough for them to even sustain Not themselves. Talk, it's yeah. like the economy, it's just making it for a man to just survive hand to mouth and it's that's making it. it difficult for everybody mm. all right hello good morning what's your name and location hello good morning please tell us your name and where you're calling from i'm mohammed Delaga. i'm calling from Bida in niger state niger state all right mohammed please go ahead go ahead with your let's thoughts. have your reaction here yeah. please stay away I'm from mohammed your tv Delaga. set Stay away from your TV All set. All right, uh, we'll have to you. take a message here. Uh, Mohammed, please, uh, next, when you're calling us, uh, when you try again, make sure you stay away from your TV and talk to us uh, through your phone. All right, there's a message here, and it says, this country is not fair to all citizens in relation to pension regime style. The contributory pension scheme is a uh, scam, honestly. If the country places premium on her citizens, the CPS should be abolished, and why? Because PFAs are repeating the pension or repeating the pensions of their capitals. Okay, Abdul Karim from Mina, thank you so much for you your message. Uh, repin. Uh, repin. Okay, mm. repin. Mm. Yes, but you know the government is actually making it look as if the PFAs, you know, are God sent. They're there to help out. All right, more messages coming in. Good morning, presenters. The condition of retirees in Nigeria is terrible. Our leaders are not helping at all. Instead, it is getting worse by the day. It is as if there are no laws in place regarding the issues. It is an act of wickedness. And uh, according to him, in uh, his opinion, he believes that if uh, the former governor of Kano State, that's Konkoso, became president of Nigeria, he would have put things right the way they should be. Because when he was governor of his state, he fixed the issues concerning pensions and gratuity in a way that one month after retirement, you will get your complete entitlement. And that is what a lot of pensioners are asking mm. for. And that is what a lot of people actually see as, you know, uh, see fit as what and, is and how it's this, supposed to happen. This kind of, you know, former yes, government. Before you go ahead. All right. That message was from John Tolorun Shogbo. Tolorun Shogbong from Bida, Niger State. I hope she didn't mother your name on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, indeed, uh, uh, John pointed out a good thing. I mean, if we have, you know, uh, ex or former governors who are patriotic, who actually care about their people and if they should put things in place, this could be done. Now, these are the reasons why they keep saying that Nigerians know what to do but will not do it. All right, we have another caller there. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, your name and location. My name, Bobo. Okay. I'm calling Bobo. from the South State. From Niger State? 
Delta State. Oh, Delta State. Thank you for joining yes. us this morning. Go ahead. My opinion is the president that we, we, we are led, that we are our president now, mm. in Bola Tinubu. Before, I was aware that when subsidies, commercial of course, subsidies, why did you just put a refinery on that before it announced a announce uh, for, 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 for uh, Bobo, we're not talking about the subsidy removal. Please, can you stick to the retirement? We're talking about the retirement, the you know, retirees and their family members, you know, the burden and, and the stress they go through in order to get their money. Uh, my money, money scares are there. What, what that would All right, Bobo, I would actually advise you to uh, just uh, listen for a bit and then call, call us back, okay? Thank you so much. We have more callers on the line and we have more messages. So please, uh, the line, the number to call or send messages via WhatsApp is displayed on the screen. Okay. Mm. Mm. Indeed. So, you know, a lot of people are, are going through a lot, but then let's take up some few messages there. The struggle of retirees is very pathetic in Niger State. We have so many people from Niger complaining uh, and the, it said Niger State and the like. We pray that the new government in place will treat these issues humanely. We keep wondering why it takes so much time to process their benefits. And uh, this is from Mohammed Shehu from Kontogura in Niger State. All right, thank you so much, Mohammed Shehu. Very sad one there. Okay, we have another message there. Mm -hmm. It says, I am Al Haji Musa Mohammed Hadeja from Jagawa State. Uh, good morning, Husseina and Sumaya. Okay, he said your friend. <laughs> good morning. Uh, so um, he spoke about the programs where he said to me, poor planning ahead of retirement period is the major obstacles that teased some retirees because only a few planned well to start businesses, farming and rearing animals during services. And the struggle expenditures of the retiree will never change due to poor, poor plan and that is the uh, main problem that would put him their family in the trouble and at the long last or the, you know at the last end to find himself paralyzed Eliza, okay okay yeah may, may god help <laughs> us on all that matter indeed okay there is also but would you say that people are, are having you know are not planning right when there is no enabling environment where you don't even earn a lot no, you know, the funny thing is, I love, I love what survive. someone actually said. They said, uh, you plan for something and in the next few months it all changes. Because imagine how the Naira is being devalued so badly that your money means nothing. Indeed. Hello, good morning. What's your name and location? Uh, from Taraba State, Yalingo. What's your name? Akama Adunia. All right, Akama, thank you for joining us. Go ahead with your reaction. Thanks. Honestly, the issue of retirees is very sympathetic. In fact, how do you, how do you, hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Pardon? Go ahead. We can hear you. Your head. So the issue is so sympathetic because how can somebody serve 35 years and after retiring, they will tell you that, like in the federal government sector, you have to stay for after after that after retirement you stay for one year before you are being paid your gratuity you have not been you will not be paid and it's not that you have stolen money from the government how do they expect you to survive with your fa family it is very sympathetic the system is too poor to the grave and after being paid how can they tell you that after serving 35 years you cannot manage your money ah. It is sympathetic. How can they give you 25% or 50% of your gratuity and say you should use it and the remaining one will be kept as a subsequent pension pay? What sort of system is that? This is somebody that served 35 years and he has the knowledge and he has his age. If you know what, if that money is given to him in bank, he knows what he's going to do with it. But the situation whereby they said you should be given up, what for? This is somebody who suffered for that for that at five years. He suffered and worked for such father diligently and efficiently for the state, for the for the for the for the, for the government. But at the third end, he's being considered as somebody who doesn't know what he's, uh, he's doing. 
In fact, I want the government to look over the situation of retirees. Presently, you find out that many die, died before. Within that one year that you have been kept aside, no salary, nothing. That is why some of the retirees died easily. Because when they start thinking, they didn't steal money, and there's no way they can survive because there is no salary for one year. How do you survive? How do you go on? So it makes some of them die easily. So I want the federal government to think over that support situation and look upon the retirees. Now that they're even talking of the palliatives, let me put that aside because it's not important on the topic now. But what I want us to understand that the government should look over the situation of retirees. Consider that they don't need anything from the government again. Pay them their gratuity when to at least what what is bad if others other other sectors are being paid after two or three months? Why should other sectors be kept up to one year before they are paid? You should know that this person is about retiring, so you should know that you should get prepared and get his payment being done. Not that you should keep him for one year without anything. So that is my stake. Thank you very much for that contribution. I mean, a lot of things are coming to light. You know, we know that immediately you retire, they give you about twenty five percent or fifty percent of what has been gathered in order to start up something then the rest would come like consequently but then yeah. now he's saying that some places have stalled it until after one year in order that to give really it to so you, what would you be doing without your knowledge it's it's like conservatorship you know someone else having a control of your money without and you then they keep, having they keep, uh, getting interest yes you know, and people keep it. calling on the governments you know that sometimes you just have to have somebody that would oversee those people and make sure you know they, they reap out the consequences of their actions. Okay, we have another caller. Good morning. Good morning. Are you with us? Hello, yes. Yeah. Good morning. Okay, your name and location, please. My name is Mohamed Dalaga. I'm calling from Biga in Niger State. Okay, go ahead, Mohamed. Um, the, the retirement in Nigeria is another episode, a very big episode. In fact, most especially our... Hello? Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. Hello? Well, with you. Go ahead, please. Okay. Most, most especially our security agencies, in fact, the policemen, have witnessed many episodes where I saw the police retirees offering. Most especially some die in their active service and their family were not paid. The struggle. In fact, in Nigeria, I don't see, maybe the time is coming, I don't see if government has not done anything on it. I don't see a reason why someone should be a civil servant. Because being a civil servant at five years and another year after retirement, your life will be wasted. Many things. Mm. At least something needs to be done in this country. Something urgent needs to be done by government. Look at the issue of first subsidy now. Are they going to increase their monthly pension for the tariffs? They are part of us. They are part of Nigeria. They are women being like us. Mm. I think government needs to do something urgent. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Honestly, it, it, it's really, really sad. You know, we need to take care of the senior citizens. And in situations where he mentioned that uh, the person dies and the family are not given anything. Now, these kind of things, when the people working in that system, the service, uh, the people like the police and all that, hear things like that and they know that at the end of your, your, your journey with the uh, government, you don't have anything to show for it, that would motivate them to, you know, do the bad things, the corruption and all that that we've been fighting against. So the, there is a lot to do. And, and Niger State people keep complaining, Hussein, about the, this situation. All right, good morning. Good morning. Yes, your name and location, please. Uh, my name is Adam Smadaki. I'm calling from Guagomeda, Abuja. Okay, go ahead. Yes, please, I want to contribute to your topic for today. Okay. Yes, but honestly speaking, what we are experiencing today concerning this patient scheme, the whole thing is a scam. You can imagine after retiring, after serving your government for 35, 36 years, when you go, they start asking you for primary school certificate, secondary school certificate. If you we are not having all these things, will you pass all these years in service? 
Some of these things have been mislaid, but now they are not asking you as a condition for you to be paid. Government need to look into it seriously. It's alarming. Enjoying your day. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Uh, but, you know, on what he said, is it possible for, you know, say, primary school that someone attended way back that could still be existing until now for you to go back and, you know, get your primary school certificate? That is, if you've lost some, because we've seen situations of, you know, fire, fire and all that. And... Mm. All right, we have another caller. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yeah, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Jeremiah Daniel. I'm calling from Niger State. All right, please, let's have your contribution. Uh, my contribution is just to say this issue of pension scheme. I don't know why Nigerians have to be patient this long, because we all know that this pension is just a spam. But uh, I really don't want to say that people should go and protest, but being... Being, being, being gentle or being silent to this unjust government uh, is not really the way out because you will see the politicians, they don't have anything like pension. They only lose the money and nobody is going after them. But you that you have been just faithful to start your government, after that five years, you will spend another four, five years without the money. In fact, the issue is just that the pension has been trained for you to die so that they know probably your family cannot access it and it has become uh, like the illegal money to use. So I want to advise the new government if there is any way of abolishing this uh, issue of uh, pension scheme, I think it will be better. Or if they cannot abolish it, they, they should be able to address it. Maybe bring some policies that will now prevent those who are in charge of the pension because it will look like uh, the issue of minor, that I mean, in million they say the man eats and nothing has, no, 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 nothing has been done to him. So please and please, if you people that are there, you have the way of telling the government to know what to do. Because very soon, the patience of the, uh, of the workers will, 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 will not work again. Probably they will come to the street or they start doing something which is not supposed to be done. Thank you for that contribution. And now, uh, Hussein, uh, the, the point is, everybody is even talking about, you know, uh, how you go back to collect your money and there's a lot of choice. Let's not forget that there are states that do not even pay the they pension pay, yeah. at all, yeah. even after your the whole documentation and all that. Yes. No, but why do you even need documentation every month to go get your pensions? Are you not supposed to give them an account where they know you're a pensioner, you're a pensioner and you know they transfer the money monthly just like salaries? Honestly, at this point, I wish Wouldn't that, that we could easier? have somebody from the pension office you know, to call uh, and try to defend themselves because nobody seems to have good news on this matter. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Yes, your name and location, please. How are you? Fine, thank you. Your name and location, please. Am I speaking to Talk TV? Yes, you are. Go ahead. What was surprising to me is that somebody will work for 35 years and will not get his payment. I take example of my late brother's wife. She died, she died in 2014. My wife retired in 2017. I also have somebody, a deceased person, who died in 2017. No, nobody talked about their money again in Niger State. Hmm. It's a very sad situation there. Um, I think you're paying more attention to your TV and than to somebody us. Somebody was elected. Somebody was elected. He's not enjoying. He's not enjoying in the Senate and he was the governor. He didn't pay anybody. All right, all right. Thank you so much for that amazing uh, contribution there on that one. I mean, we're talking about even the people living, not getting their money, you know, talk more of the people who are dead for family to go and retrieve their money. It's a very sad situation. You get frustrated to a point that you yes, don't even you want do. to go back again after being stressed for months to get the money of someone whom you have lost. All right. Let's see this message. Yeah, he said, thanks for the topic.
retirees are not finding it easy government in line with pension reform acts are required to upgrade the pension at least within five years or anytime salaries are increased but this is not being done while retired permanent secretaries retired with 100 percent of their salaries other go home with peanuts government should consider the pensioners in their planning and this from adeni around coyote we have this one he says he loves this program so much good morning he's a first time i thank you so much for your message we hope you continue to watch us now good morning uh if the cps is good why exonerating the perm sec this i don't think this is for us secretary. this is definitely for not for us thank you so much good morning pfas are heartless truly uh, this is your opinion my mom retired from kaduna state as a director since 2017 but till this day she hasn't received anything from the pfa or the state government now the issue has made her to go into depression really really sad please talk to them to do the needful because people are dying this is from dogo uh, engineer dogo from kaduna we're really sorry for your predicament uh, dogo and we pray that uh, something happens to uh, yeah, to alleviate that. you off of all the burden soon uh, uh, good morning yes civil servants should start businesses while they're serving but the main problem is that what kind of business will you start when you're earning 18 to 30k which is less than minimum wage and you live in a rented house and family to take care of and bills to pay this is from ibrahim in my uh, thank you so much uh, ibrahim all right good morning uh the government are thinking of security challenges but they are not thinking about the military men and women that upon seeing 35 years cannot build a house or feed good due to uh, the low pay so look at the nigerian army for example salary is not to uh, so it's not something to write home about and senators are <laughs> getting about 35 million uh, naira for holidays um a really really sad one there now we know that is someone for a first hand based on the way he he framed it you know soldiers that are securing the borders for us while we sleep you know are not getting paid enough a very sad situation there we hope that the government look into it abdul samad muhammad the next message reads uh, is from abdul samad he said i voluntarily retired and this is three years now after having my screening and the otp serving governor then promised not to allow the newly sworn governor to inherit our payment and look at me now spending my four years without receiving anything please call the attention of katsina state to please do something about katsina state retirees now i was thinking it was only niger states you know oh it's not yeah, just i mean niger one states. of the what we know that uh they are one of the small states you know with um not much of development unlike other uh, big states so katsina also I mean, we're getting this. A lot of people, and, and earlier you mentioned Bainwe. Lots of yeah. things are happening, and it's so sad. The federal government and the state government should have to work together to create something, you know, for these people. It doesn't even. I mean, Most you should have thing a decision. Is giving people access to their money. Yes, to you do should make a decision about your money. All right, we have another caller there. Good morning. Good morning. Please turn down the volume of your TV set. Okay, are you with us? Your name and location, please. Yes. All right, I think uh, the caller needs to, uh, you know, stay away from your TV set in order to call us or reduce the volume so that we can talk. You can't hear yourself talk. Okay, so let's talk to each other instead about this. This is a serious topic that we hope that, you know, the government officials, the stakeholders involved would, uh, you know, talk or fix these situations for people. Okay, you're here with us. Good morning. All right, I think we lost that caller there on that one. So, you know, we just hope at the end of the day, it's still the same thing. It's the same, you know, repetition of situations. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yes, your name and location, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Antero Sam. I'm calling from Yobi. Okay, thank you for joining us. Go ahead with your contribution. Well, uh, my contribution concerning the retirement scheme. At times, uh, our parents, though my 
My father is a retired police officer. He served for 35 years. And uh, the issue of, of, of pay off of what they are taking home is not even something to write them about. And the issue of uh, this pension contribution scheme, right now, there is nothing the government of the day are doing about it, not especially in the aspect of the, in the part of police officers. Now look at this, somebody spent 35 years in service, instead of giving 25 to 30,000 with a family of 10 or 15. Check out medical bills, check out heart rate. Okay, now look at this for instance. If somebody, you see him successfully, let me, let me bring it as the of where I know, successfully in this job. Either he took loan from the bank to establish himself or to build a house. How much the government are they paying? In which a person will retire and his benefit are not being given for heaven's sake. Please, you as a, as a voice of the voice, as a media, media people, you are the people to have the message, most especially the people in the service and the retirees. That is my take for this way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much you. for that contribution there. Uh, an amazing part he talked about, you know, uh, lots of people going through the same thing and at the end of the day, Hussein, it still boils down to the salary. Mm -hmm. I'm not being paid enough. I mean, if you're paying uh, the civil servants a lot of money, then even when you give some, then they can actually save some from their own angle, where at the end of the day, before their pension, you know, have a lot of situations to uh, fix and all that from their end, which we're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, then at least you from your own end have something to fall back on before it. And... Even if we should push that people should, you know, go uh, save money, where would they save from? How would they do it? But honestly, Nigerians need to change the whole mentality of uh, uh, relying on one source of retirement plan because we've seen a lot of people, you know, die from that kind of, you know, shock and disappointment. When you rely on, it's either you're leaving your children, mm. you're expecting your children to be your own retirement plan when they're trying exactly. to build on their own exactly. family, or you're expecting you, the pension, you know, to pay you. So what if they disappoint you? What happened? Mm. What happened to both? Right. Well, I think uh, there, there's a lot of there are lots of sectors that actually needs to, to be, be covered. to be revamped. Mm. You know, at this. Um, this particular government has a lot of work to do, to do and I mean indeed. it. So they, 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 it's, it's not, it's not going to be a one-day job. And hopefully, we'll get to a point where all these issues and these challenges that pensioners face will be a foregone story. Well, I meant to that. Now we'll just take a few more messages, and then we'll wrap up uh, this uh, particular topic. My contribution to your topic is as follows. Government should encourage servicing civil public servants to access their pension funds while in service to invest themselves, which, if blessed, may even make them resign and embrace business to allow the youth to be replaced. Some workers lack working capital to do businesses. Yes, that's true. But mm. please, next time, uh, endeavor to include your name and your location, okay? All right, we have another one. It says, good morning. I'm a serving civil servant and is calling on the 10th Senate to look into this uh, pension of a thing. It's, a really, it's really a scam, okay, a scam program. And his name is Omenge or Omenga from Zaria. I hope I pronounced your name right. Thank you so much for that one. You know, uh, what we keep saying, federal government, sometimes we need to be precise on, okay, we're calling on the, the Senate, something should be done. Uh, we're calling on the president, something should be done. Uh, they're, they're in, all the federal in, government, in, so in, they should all do something about it. In things it. like that, people tend to, you know, shy away from situations like this. And this all will push the blame mm. on this person. Nobody to hold accountable exactly. for these situations. Mm. So we, we hope that, you know, people uh, get to, uh, the stakeholders who do the right thing by these people who served them for years. I mean, without them, the country wouldn't have grown this far. All right, so we have a caller. I think this will be the last call for today. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, your name and location, please. I'm Buba by name, calling from Borno State. Okay, Buba, thank you for joining us. Go ahead with your contribution on the topic. In fact, uh, I'm happy that you brought up this program. Uh, okay. In our state here in Borno, in fact, the, governor, the government 
interfere, does not do anything tangible for people. People are suffering a lot. After retiring for 35 years, you won't be paid your gratuity, nor be paid your pension. About 10, 11 years, people have not been paid their gratuity nor pension. Please, it will be proper for the government to do something. Because people are dying. People will die and leave their gratuity behind. Those that their parents die, they are supposed to be paid uh, what do we call it, death gratuity. But to date, nothing has been paid. They are just dying. Children withdrew from school, either primary, secondary, or university, because no money to pay. So I think uh, the attention of the Borneo State government should be drawn so that something tangible should be done to elevate all these problems. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Buba, for that contribution. We hope that the governor of Borneo State, who, you know, some people have said that he is one of the good governors, you know. Yeah, who took a, a look working governor. Working yes. governor, indeed. Who's really, really working for and, you know, people. has the uh, interest of the people at heart. Mm. So we hope that he gets to, you know, to look, take a look into this matter and fix it for them because the senior citizens are, you know, top priority. They, they actually set they their foundation for yes. us to you know, still yeah. be here and enjoy something. So, honestly, there should be something to look um, forward to. And with that, uh, we have actually come to the end of this segment. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you for your contributions, whether it's via calls or even messages. Uh, we cannot express how much we, uh, we deeply appreciate, you know, uh, you guys tuning in and watching. And hopefully next week uh, we would uh, be bringing you more interesting topics for you know of discussion it has to be social issues mm -hmm. that affect each and every one of us you're still watching daybreak extra on trust tv please stick around People will know me that they call me Atiku Sule. Mm. Atiku now be popular the way people know me. My thank God for this. Since we don't start the business, I never regret. Allah, I thank God. I don't start the business now from Lagos, 99. 99. Mm. I want my family to enjoy me. Me say, I thank God. So, I go I just the thank God for God. But this way didn't tell me plenty because my father don't die, Tete. I don't get anybody, not only my mother. So I mean tell them, say me they leave me, make a day Lagos, make a day Ozu. So since eh, we are done the the do the business, I never regret. Mm, I learned this work oh, for Alaba Suru. If you enter Alaba Suru from Alaba now for my two, as Atiku, that guy, they will tell you, say, ah the boy, eh, he did there. So since yeah, they do the business, I never see my mother, so I'm hungry. Uh, I see the other day which your guy did the carry money go give them. So the thing we did with that. So this work, but first you no go, no go, no go hungry. Uh, no go. If you don't get focus, people will not savvy. And I know they say the the, the business. Ah, they do and they do wrong. Go. Mm, you do the business. Go calm down. You calm down. No go. You saw the money they chop in here. Uh, I mean, also, as I start, nobody helped me. Now, God, you know.
Yeah, now the thing we are the tango every day. Uh, boy, so people know if you know. Before they go look people where they say me say na where they no get anything. Uh, the team me I see for this my business. I use my business in our big house. I they sell my children go school. Mm. For my area, if you know if you know see me from my off shop, say they no go feel no say I be busher. You know me tell this. So I start. I thank God for God. Mm. I go say now this my business. Now this work. Now I go Sunday. Talk to we are go we are go take to no uh, no people because I don't know person for this business. Maybe not all get you balance your face two face three face from for yanya to kalishi. Person we never know atiku we do the same it just come. Allah no be seen our mouth for yanya to kalishi. Person we never know atiku we do the same it for the attire. Then he didn't just come from village. Me I believe God's guy. I start business from Lagos. Very uh, from, from Lagos, I start the business. Uh, we are deal with my organ, 99. Uh, so I serve my organ. I said, I don't reach to the open my own, my organ free me. I can't say, make a call in Abuja, and I make a call see what's in the album for Abuja. I thank God. Since we are done the Abuja like 11 years now, I no regrets. Like 11 years, we are done the, I no regrets. Then now God just help me. Silent, we are done. We are done. We are done. See for this business. You don't risk make her leave the work. My, I say no. Uh, this work, but I go and send my children go America. Allah, if you God secret me, where they laugh. No be small work. Oh. Before you buy a car now, you won't buy better car now. You start with the one million, one point two. Uh, uh, I buy them for about two, about two car. Now they are the my car. Now they buy the car. Me with my friend, we kick out together. Now for about two car. Now we go fit tell you better car. Now we go fit treat you better when we go buy. We make car day. We the sweets. Now it be Julia. They call her Julia. We make car. We never born. We chop her. Me I no life for you. Now it be this sweet. We the sweets. And no go fit no. Say no be no be man on. My demand on serves the sweets. Now the one we don't burn, we don't burn, we no go feel work again. Now it be no be cow. Now one no be cow, that one no go feel sweet. Now the thing, because I say better me, now the thing where I get customer for this area. Uh, for this area, for Ajata. Because uh, people will see my meat. Uh, so people, hmm, we never sabi the chop cow if you see me, the buyer. Say, yeah, because I know, say you, as you stand like this, you will say better thing. If I see person, we go feel that thing for me. You no get problem with your money. If you and you don't talk, say okay, oh, before, after seven months, I feel they start to they give you money. Small, small. My go give me chance. Maybe say the money self, I know go get problem to they give you back. Because I know, say me, you better give me 50 million, say, no way I go feel wrong. Go. Uh, because I know focus, I get focus. Oh, me, if you best, I get money now, I won't buy land, make I get fence, make I buy cow, the train cow. Now, be said, I like, pass with this. So, if you money, if you money come more, Eh? I will buy land, do a fence, to train cow. You see me that if you see the boy where go now, that my boy where I call. Where I send about to I mean send money to go, go send out to Lagos. See me call. Don't they Lagos for that four months, four years, it's no get anything. Come. Uh, now me them born following father, now my brother and I be father. So I said, I can't come here now, don't they happy? Every morning they bend down for me, say, oh God, daddy, uh, this work, I won't do it. I won't do it. Now you did this office, but at 15 days, I don't travel. You do well down for me. You don't they tell me again, say, oh daddy, you go carry that person, come for the girl, say, because this mess, I said, they do I'm so, in the happy. Mm, say, I will give another place, may go to start. I mean, don't worry. Eh? The thing where God sent me, my mama, I go do it. Now God sent me, say, make her, if you see person to help you. And nobody say, now get money. Nobody say, the money too much, man. I go show you where. Mm. If you say, now Lagos, I did, I go don't get boys, where are these 15 boys? Eh, my Buddha here, nobody will want work. You don't understand, but if you see guy, I did, can't quit. Mm. Where no be chief person? Eh, me, I know they for other country. They know me.
I get plenty customer. My some customer where they like pass. Get they, one, get one man for across here. I don't give them business now. Don't, I don't they do business now, but I'm seven years. You know they hold me. If they hold me, they will tell me, say, I bear. If I say this one thing, I will balance you. Now the customer where they didn't me where well. But then plenty. But now only the one we deal with me here. Because I, I tell you that I say for barras, for third gates, for your phase three, phase four, I get the supply. I depend God, make it don't make me get customer more more. Plus, I'm a smell, I smell to you, I don't see for this thing plenty. I'm out of Fabuja here. My student go to go school Fabuja here. I be there as Fabuja here. Eh? My father that come up for Karsi school Fabuja here. So the thing I don't, yeah, I don't do, don't plenty. No be only matter, now be investment. Mm, I don't train children with them day. I see the another person. Maybe say no be, be me born now. I see they train them with money. So what I want me God do for me? Me God do they carry me they go up more. more. Mm. And they like Sunday market too. You no know, say guys, we travel, we go market, we go up. Monday to Saturday they will come house. They will come do, come cook. Better soup. They know, see, they don't they chop mama put like the place where they work. On Sunday, my friend, where I don't see, but I attend the seven day, they will come Sunday. Come, I think, give me one kilo, give me three kilo, give me four kilo. So, now Sunday market, I know this and play. Then work for Bali in the island for Nejiko, Iko Yote. At the supply, Nejiko, Iko Yote, I get customer. Mm, and I go just say, make a come about that, you come last. So, people will know me from Alaba International, Edigasa. They know me, I learn work. I was you. I was you. That time I learned this work. So I go to cry. They go carry me to where we say, if I live to my family, they know if I carry that low top of my head. They go carry them. Say, oh yeah, they go, go sell her. And the thing, we had the thank God. Say, I suffer. I see they enjoy my sufferness. We are suffer. Mm. So my name is Atiku Sule from Lagos. Uh, so I'm in Mebusha. People will know me. Eh, now they call me Atiku Sule. My, my name, my Muslim name, Sulaiman Bello. So I tell all these youth now, I, I beg them, may them go do business. May they like to go learn work. Eh, because me, I thank God for my own, where they do. And I learn work for Ovalinde Island, eh, for Nejiko Ikoyote. People will know me from my two to go, my two to uh, Ajegunle. They know me, Atiku Sule Mebusa. So this is my work when I thank God for my business. Uh, I don't use, I don't use I do so many things. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us through uh, the daybreak extra. Okay, right now we'll quickly uh, take some stories on the entertainment segment, you know, bringing you what's happening in the entertainment industry. Right now we'll start with the uh, Nollywood drama between Angela Okore uh, versus Anita Joseph and Uchi Elendu, whom are known to be friends, you know. So I Angela, very close. Very close. So Angela, the one in the middle, accused Uchi and Anita for sabotaging her, for bringing out her story. There was a time where she was sick, she was very sick, and I think there was a lot of complications where people were thinking that she had, you know, a bad sexual relationship with uh, two to three partners at the same time. Okay, so, like probably a, a sexually transmitted disease. Yes, yeah, so a, a sad, a secret, which is kind of, should have been a secret. But then she said her two friends whom she trusted went to the hospital and recorded her in that situation and sent it to a blogger. And that blogger decided to share the story. So uh, she, she was dragged throughout the story. But the is it possible period. that it was any of the friends could it be like a nurse or someone that works at the hospital that saw her recognized her and decided to do that i think she's very specific because she at that point with the dressing and all that mm. she only met with those people oh. so she is aware and they're not really denying it 
the only thing they, they they came out doing were just throwing jabs at her like in a shady way and mm. she said she has receipts since they've decided to put her dirty laundry out there then she's going to do the same so well, there's been a lot of need. spillage one person has to be a bigger person exactly you know? and because, people <laughs> netizens yeah. were telling her to be the bigger person she said nobody should ask her yeah, but it doesn't really make any sense it is it's obvious that uh, god has uh, shown her that both of them are not really friends mm. in the first place so what's the point just cut them off instead of you know uh, crying over spilled milk a lot it has of happened. allegations it's in of the past. Them, them sleeping with the native doctor it doesn't it doesn't really matter there, it doesn't yes. really matter she should just you know ignore them and cut the cord that, be the that bigger tied, person that indeed tied them. Mm -hmm. i mean and she should be grateful that god actually showed her the kind of people that these people are at the earliest time so next story we have the story of a fan who uh, took the bicycle, wrote his favorite star's name on it, carried a big, did a big banner, and held did it. Did he go on a tour <laughs> round, round the country? With a bicycle, you know, yeah. from Bainway okay. to Lagos, heading to see Davido. Did Davido <laughs> greet him with open arms? And did I meet? <laughs> the, the funny thing is, I didn't think he made it there because someone posted it on Twitter and uh, posted that, okay, young man, so, so making a journey to Lagos from Benway to meet Davido with bicycle is on his eighth day <laughs> of traveling the and road. And Davido said, and turn around, I'm not home. Exactly. You know, a lot of people seem to take advantage you know and i know it's obvious that uh, a lot of people actually think he wants one thing maybe he wants to be compensated somehow he does he knows, want to be compensated. exactly because he I knows mean, davido has open arms he's generous mm. look at what happened to the lady who actually found that uh, a huge amount of money mm. davido gave her ten thousand dollars and mm. all that so he probably decided oh what can i do what can i do country don't hard i yes. don't broke you know <laughs> okay davido is a giver all right let's do this i will say now you give it to these people one thing and Nigerians are good for very is thinking of ways exactly yeah, very creative. There, there was, there was, to, there was to that time to of uh, people tattooing artists on their skin mm, in order to get compensation ta tattoo the Bob exactly and, and if you don't compensate them then you you they start like uh shaming you to be a so bad person you canceled. don't give them something exactly mm, they start canceling you online a lot of That's expectations and all that, that. All right, so lastly, we'll take the story of Sofia Vergara, the uh, American actress, or, or should I say Hollywood actress, whom uh, shared recently, you know, that she secretly fought cancer while raising her son, a single mom, considering herself lucky that she raises awareness for early diagnosis. A really sad one. Now, you've watched her movies, you know, if you watch, if you're a big fan of Modern Family like I, I am, you know, you'd actually, you know, she's, she's a huge part of it. We mm. love her. And she, recently she's on... Um, American got talent. talent yes. yes, she's a judge she's there the and judges. all that. She's actually done so much for herself. You know, who knew that she actually went through that? This, yes. And I think that actually happened before she became a star. Yes, indeed. Yes, it obviously you, you happened know, before she became a star. Uh, people don't know about a lot of struggles, you know, about people that, that people are going through. And, and I think she went through this before she met her husband, whom she was with for seven years, because they ah, recently, that, that earlier, really yes, handsome uh, hunk of Indeed, oh. and they're, they're getting yeah. divorced. They so, announced it. I don't know uh, what is year. actually really happening to our celebrity weddings. It's Indeed. really sad. I, honestly, a lot of people that were camping on, you know, people that are seen as, okay, they already understand this marriage thing. And, and couples that fans are invested in emotionally, you know, they're just parting ways. We saw Megan Good and all that. So a lot of things is happening. And for her to come and share, you know, because these people are seen as um, role models and inspirations. So for her to come out and create awareness on this, it's a huge thing. I mean, a, a lot thing. of people are going through that. And we hope that just as she has, you know, passed through this stage that other people fighting would this would also win that. against cancer on that one okay and with that we wrap up you know the the entertainment segment and the show in general uh daybreak extra on trust tv we hope that you enjoyed the show with us this morning to stay tuned of course for the sports uh update uh from coming to you here of course for live from our studio i am sumaya abubakar thank you so much for staying with us and i'm dashan hussein Usman. Have a wonderful weekend.